Hey, I'm Jay. This is Frida Kai. Why don't you come aboard and take a look? This is a 1987 S2 35C. It's a 35 foot center cockpit sloop rigged monohull sailboat. Frida Kai has a 6 foot draft and a 50 foot air draft, 12 foot 6 inch beam, and the boat is powered by a 29 horsepower Volvo Penta. This boat sleeps six people total. Jay has sailed this boat for nearly 12,000 nautical miles, averaging 5.9 knots throughout. Jay has sailed this boat by himself and with others from Corpus Christi, Texas, out to Florida, across the Bahamas, back up all the way to Newport, Rhode Island, down the whole East Coast again, throughout the Bahamas, down the whole Caribbean chain, back up the Caribbean chain, and now with me, back down the Caribbean chain. Jay can comfortably solo sail this boat offshore or take on crew. By himself, this boat is self-sufficient for nearly two months or with crew for nearly one. Unlike most other boat tours I've done, Jay is somebody that I buddy boat with, meaning that we sail the same places together. Right now, even today, we both sailed together this beautiful anchorage and there's Adventure Born right behind me. So let's get into it. Let's see what makes Frida Kai a unique sailboat for Jay. So we're going to start from the back and move our way up to the front. Starting from the back, we've got this nice dinghy davit aftermarket system. It's a bit beefier than some of the other ones that I've seen, which is pretty nice. And you got plenty of blocks here to make uh, lifting up the dinghy quite a bit easier. Jay also has a nice little mini swim platform. I like to give him crap for this because mine's a bit bigger, but you know, his came with the boat and is a little bit stronger than mine, I'm sure. Jay, how much solar panels do you have right here? 720 watts. Wow, 720. Yeah. And Jay can also tilt these depending on where the sun is if he wants to try to get a little bit more out of them. Unlike my boat, Jay doesn't have as much electrical needs as I do, so this is more than enough for him. Jay, how much battery capacity do you have on board? 360 usable amp hours. Not bad. And what would you say is your biggest uh, electrical draw? Uh, the, all the laptops and my microwave. Real? Oh, you got a microwave. Ah, oh, tricky, tricky. So he is using some stuff. Um, one thing I do like about Jay's boat is it's a center cockpit, meaning that obviously the cockpit's in the center, so you have this extra space back here. I actually one time went sailing with Jay and I put this inflatable couch right here and it was incredibly comfortable. Shame on Jay for not doing it more. Uh, another thing that's great about a center cockpit boat as opposed to mine, which is an aft cockpit, a little more common style. Something I like about the center cockpit style is you have the bedroom down here, which I'll show you guys in a moment. But it just gives you a great staging area if you want to prep gear for the day or whatever you plan on doing. It's pretty nice. Something else that's nice back here, he's got a really big, nice storage locker for all sorts of gear. Something a lot of other boats don't have. Something else that's really nice about the center cockpit design is obviously the cockpit being in the center it means you can get to a lot of your controls a lot easier. For instance, this is Jay's main sheet here. Whereas mine's up front and a lot of the components are actually up in front of my Dodger. They're all right back here for Jay. And I mean, look at that distance. That is not far at all going back to this. Another advantage to the main sheet being so far back is my main sheet on a, my smaller boom is much further forward, meaning I need to use my boom vang a bit more. But with it being all the way back here, he has much better leverage. Something else that's nice that I really like about this is how much higher up away and out of the water the cockpit is. When I'm really heeled over, the low side of my boat, I mean, like I can reach out and touch the water, which feels a little scary sometimes, honestly, but also a little bit exhilarating. Now, Jay, as I'll mention a few times in this, is also a professional upholster. So he did all this, all this, all that, anything that has upholstery done on it, Jay's a professional and takes work wherever he can. Ain't that right, Jay? I do. One disadvantage of this style is his cockpit isn't as large as mine. Now, I'll be honest, since I made the cockpit bed, I really can't go back from that. It's just too darn comfortable whenever I'm sailing. But I guess an upside though of this style of cockpit is the combing is much deeper, so your back feels like it gets a lot more, uh, a lot more support. Jay normally kind of hangs out, puts some pillows right here whenever he's sailing. He's also got his engine controls pretty close to him, and then the windlass right here, which I do not have an electric windlass, so that's pretty nice that he's got that. Jay has all of his instruments right here. It's all pretty well self-contained. And I've handled this boat before and it sails and motors just fine. Jay being a professional upholster, he added this Isinglass. It's a flexible sort of uh, obviously clear material that still flexes a bit. And this is something that's really unique to his boat to no other that I see is Jay just has almost unlimited vision in front of his boat. Mine is always blocked a little bit by something and I, honestly I'm not a huge fan of how much vision I get out the front and mine's better than most boats but this one's really good as well this huge window up here lets Jay see everything else up there. And as well Jay can add in these panels that go here so he doesn't get wet from the sides 
or from the back if he wants to. So you can do a complete enclosure. Nearly all the controls are back here with the exception of the boom vang, but I just don't think that's nearly as important on this boat because the main sheet's so far back. So all the controls are really right here, right where you could need them. Let's take a look further up the boat. Got these nice 46 Lumar winches, big beefy boys. Now J Sport's a little bit more sail area than my sailboat Adventure Born does. So we've noticed that he sails a bit faster than me, which we're working on. There also might be some skill gap there. <laughs> Up on the boom here, Jay made this really nice stack pack. I'll be getting one of these soon. It'll make a big difference. Also, it's cool that Jay has up here. He keeps a lot of extra diesel just to extend his range for motoring and as well an emergency life raft because Jay isn't as good of a swimmer as me. <laughs> So if you do have to come out of the cockpit of Jay's boat, I do like it because you have this stainless steel, I mean, just it can't move it at all. It's super solid going all the way up. My boat doesn't have that, and that is something I do like quite a bit. Now because Jay's boat is a center cockpit, his foredeck area is significantly smaller than mine. I can lay two people down up here, do yoga, whatever. I get a lot more space out of here. As well, because he carries portable water here, and then the diesel, He's limited substantially on his deck space, but you know what? Everything comes at a cost and it's a bit of a compromise. Up here, we've got Jay's anchor. Now, Jay uses a CQR, which as my original sailing mentor told me, stands for can't quite reset. Uh, this is an older style anchor. I would say it was sort of made obsolete or not as good maybe 10 years ago as uh, the Vulcan anchor came out and I have the, the Vulcan Rachna, uh, which is just fantastic. But if it works for him, it works just fine. He's got a pretty small grade chain. Actually, that's like smaller than mine. So, you know, that is what it is, but if it works for him, it works. Jay, have you ever dragged before? Twice, once was my fault. And the other one was just a nasty weather. Nasty Didn't weather. Seagrass at yeah. night when we anchored. So we had no idea what we were uh, anchoring in. Happens to the best of us. All right, well, I think we got a good sense of how the boat is up here. Let's head down below and take a look inside. Something else I do like a little bit more about my boat is the sides here are a little bit more spacious on mine. And this, you really gotta uh, climb back into the cockpit. But I'm sure when you're sailing, that must feel a lot more safe and secure. Now let's take a look down below. And the first thing we're gonna notice is these amazing, beautiful wood floors that Jay just redid. Now they're so nice, I don't wanna step on them, so I'm gonna step now. <laughs> Like I said, Jay is quite the handyman extraordinaire, so he does all the boat work himself. Jay also has a past prior work history within the automotive industry, both I believe as a mechanic and as an upholster. Right. This guy's basically done it all, you guys. So we're gonna first start up, we're gonna go from the bow back. So we're gonna go up here into the V-berth. Now, this will sleep two people up here. Jay has uh, multiple times had crew on board for, well, how long were Renee and Travis on board for? Uh, four and a half months. Wow. I'll be honest with you, I have never come close to having somebody on my boat that long. <laughs> but that is fantastic. So he had a couple up here and they were here for four and a half months. That's outstanding. Uh, but when it's not being used for crew, Jay just uses it as a good storage area. As well, he keeps his Sailrite sewing machine here. These things weigh an absolute ton. But I'll tell you what, when you have a friend that has a sewing machine, you have a very good friend. And Jay is a very good friend like that. We've done a couple projects together. Oh, yes, we have. Yeah, no, Jay, Jay has been absolutely uh, hugely helpful on Adventure Born. So tell us now a little bit of facts here about the V-Bird. Looks like you've got good uh, airflow, just like my boat. Both of the port lights open up. Oh, nice. You get a lot more airflow. Yeah. You've got a nice deep. Oh, wow. You can fit a lot of stuff in there. OK. And There's then storage. storage back here that goes all the way to the, the wall. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. So most of my upholstery stuff and canvas stuff. Oh, I like there. this too. So you can put all your clothes and stuff here along the sides. That's a really good use of space, but then you can still tuck your body underneath. Yeah. And then another thing is there's a board underneath that goes into the spot that you're sitting yep. in right now. And this will actually make it the double. And that'll make it the double with this cushion. Otherwise, this would be a single bed, which is actually is kind of cool that you can do it this way. On my boat, I have a piece that goes here in the very center and it kind of splits the bed into two singles, sort of. I do like it on this because then you'd have a very spacious single berth. And then as well, now you have a spot here. You could sit down, maybe read, work on a laptop, put your shoes on, whatever's going on there. So yeah. really cool. All 
All right, let's take a look at the salon. But before I go, uh, Jay just showed me this unique trick. Look at that. If you want to keep the airflow going and don't want to mess with the main door, you have this as a nice little privacy curtain so you can get changed and uh, still have your privacy. I love these little boat tricks like this that really make the boat very, uh, very homey. So Jay, tell us a little bit about the salon here. The salon here, kind of cool. Mass is in the center. That's the only thing I don't like about it because it's in your view. So my but... boat is a deck stepped mast, meaning there's a compression post and then, um, yeah, is this? No, this, this is the actual mast here that yeah. goes to the keel. So if you wanna, so if you wanna um, pull your mess, your mast out, you have to take the boot off up there, and, and then pull, pull it straight, straight up, up and out, nice and carefully. Gotcha. Yeah. So on my boat, it's just kind of a plate there, um, and the upside of my boat is no water ever comes down through here. The downside of a keel step mast is, Jay, does water come in through this? If water can get in through the top of the mast with the sheet lines and the halyards and that, yes, it, yes, yes. It every will. every keel step <laughs> mast uh, brings water down, but you know it's fresh water probably, and it's going to go straight down to your build, so it's not the end of the world. These type of keel step masts do give you quite a bit more support, I believe. But I think as far as newer boats go, most boats now have the compression post. It just makes more sense, takes up less space, and it's easier to take your mast on and off the boat. All catamarans are compression posts. Post. Yeah, yeah, that'd be Next very step. strange to have a catamaran where yeah. the mass goes down. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, right, so you've got so. two comfy couches here. We've got tables that come out. I like where you've got your navigation station here with laptops. And then as well, you got your, your VHF down here, CD player, got all your electronics back here. Very cool. And then Jay also mounted a TV. For movie night and actually the tv is well placed so you can see it from either one of these even though you've got this thing here i think he made really good use of that space and of course there's plenty of storage underneath all of this here jay's got a nice library going here more storage in here that was a wet locker that became a pantry and that's a smart move wet lockers are great if you're up in a stormy cold sea but jay and i have figured out that it's much better to sail in a tropical warm place Right. where when it rains you just go oh it's raining no problem and if i do need a wet locker the, the head is right next to it it's easy to hang the wet clothes in the head so this is the bathroom on frida kai because it's a center cockpit it's kind of interesting that there's two ways to come back it actually makes like a loop in the boat um so this is on one side here and actually this is one of your best engine accesses right here isn't it right it's right behind on this panel the seat comes down. And this seat would come down in case you want to take a shower in here. Correct. And then we can unbolt this. And now you got an access there. Something else I really like about Jay's boat is he can pull off this panel, the panel up front there, one on the side. So there's quite a bit of access to get all in down here. And you really need that. If you have a sailboat and you don't have good access to your engine, your life is going to be miserable. So this diesel tank here holds 25 gallons of diesel. The engine consumes 0.7, 70% of one gallon per hour at six knots. So if there's any math gurus, uh, please put that in the comment section because I'm not going to bother with it. <laughs> cool. Now this is also a wet bathroom. If you want to, you could use this head here as a shower, and then you've got a spot to sit. Jay, will you demonstrate a shower for us real quick? <laughs> now Jay, when was the last time you used the shower in here? Uh, I haven't used it since I left Fort Pierce. Same thing for me as well. I don't ever actually shower inside my boat. We always shower outside off the swim platform. It's just, a, for a million reasons, it's easy. If our boats were in northern colder climates, we would be using it inside, maybe, but it's so much better to shower outside. All right, we are here in the aft cabin. Now you do gotta watch your head a bit, but it's all very usable space. It's not spacious, as you can see. I'm just barely six foot and I can whack my head on literally everything. Um, but one thing I do love more than anything about center cockpit boats is the aft cabin. You've got the bed as far back as possible. As well, usually you get a bigger, like actual mattress bed. Something I think is really cool. So Jay's obviously looking very comfortable and cool on his couch. 
It's got the full bed here. And then these are unique. They got these little side things here. Side port holes that can pop up. And look at that. You can get a fresh breeze in right here. As well, we've got an aft hatch. All this is pretty nice. It really keeps airflow going through the boat, which you need if you're gonna be in the tropic. It's absolutely essential. Uh, Jay, what are some things you like about this aft cabin besides the raw or the uh, the carpet? Carpeting is not something you normally see on a boat, folks, but it is wonderful back here. It just feels homey. I, I like it a lot, to be honest. Uh, I put in a while back and love it. it originally came with carpet in it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so you, you redid it, though? I redid it. Yeah. yeah. I can imagine maybe after a while this could get nasty, but since I've known you, this has been in here. This has been great. Right. Um, so we've got closet storage space there. I assume there's got to be a ton of storage back in here. Correct. And then this big section that we're missing is going to be that aft locker. Now, you might be thinking like, ooh, man, you're, you're taking away all this interior space for a locker outside. You need to have outside storage. It's just absolutely essential. There's going to be things like gasoline or just dirty things that need to have a place to go, and up there is where they go. It's one thing that my boat has in spades. I have literally at least three times the amount of outside locker space than Jay e does. Easily, and I miss it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty you great. You never have enough outside locker space. No, but I'm also, if you're well organized, you can be happy with it. But yeah, it always would be nicer if you had a Narnia closet on your boat, you know? Yeah. Every every sailor wishes that. All right, so cool. And again, I'll say it one more time. The bed on this boat, Jay, if you wanna. The bed on this boat is extremely comfortable because especially if you're right here, you're exactly, and I can feel the divot. This is where you sleep, isn't it? Uh, yes, but at the same time, I've got a bunch of stuff underneath the mattress on oh, okay. the starboard side. This was like your divot. Yeah. But anyway, what I really like about this though is you're exactly centered with the boat, so you're the least point of sway, and if you're at anchor, it's the least point of bounce as the boat bounces up and down on the anchor. So I just think in general, you're going to get a really good night's sleep if you're right here. Now, this is interesting. There's this thing above my head right here. Is this the... This is for the emergency uh, tiller, isn't it? It is. So this goes outside, so that means you have to pull open the bed and then drop a rod all the way down. It's right underneath you. Oh, okay, well, well, we'll avoid it, but that is a bit of work. Mine's yeah. a, a lot more uh, lot more easily accessible. Yeah, and that's one of the things that's making that side of the bed roll up right now. Oh, really? Is because the tiller, the square tiller handle is on that side. All right, let's move on to the last space, the galley. But as we do, I just got to say one more time, these huge side portholes are bringing in just a really nice, simple, gentle breeze. And it's nice as well being able to look and see outside. There we go. You're just perfectly at eye level with like all these other boats out there, but you have a ton of privacy, so it's really nice. So all right, Jay, let's take a look at your... Now you'll see this is a little... Walk through galley? It's definitely... A, these doors are definitely tight. They're not, not huge doors, so you gotta be comfortable in these claustrophobic spaces. Uh, that is one mark I would say about this boat is, is this technically a 35 foot boat you said? Correct. That's waterline though, isn't it? Correct. Okay, overall length. No, overall, no, it's overall length. Overall length is a 35? Over, overall wow. length is 35. Seriously? Yeah. That's incredible. So this is an overall length of 35 foot boat. I thought it was a waterline 35, overall 37. That's incredible. This is a lot of boat to pack in a 35 feet. I'm very, very impressed with that. Dock fees would be at an absolute minimum. When you think about it, this boat will go sort of everywhere mine will go. It will handle the ocean, I think, a little bit better because of its deeper draft, because of its higher cowling. Um, but I, I guess mine has a shallower draft than yours. And this boat has a six foot draft, which is gonna prevent it from a few places, but six feet is really not like that, that bad. I was able to do the Bahamas just like you were. Yeah, well, not just like me. Well, I could go most everywhere that you were. Oh, Jay, those are the best places. Anyway, yeah. all right, so let's check out some of the things we have here in the galley. We first off have a nice big refrigerator, and there's a freezer in here too, isn't there? Yeah, that's right. Nice. So Jay's got a nice convenient freezer spot right there. And how does this fridge do for you? Does it hold the cold well? Well, Whoa. that's a gallon of water that's frozen solid. Look at that, It's folks. outside the freezer. Not bad, so, not bad. All right, so, he, so, he, so he's flexing on me now, folks. <laughs> cool. And then what's also nice is this all becomes very usable countertop space. I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of why they put this here. I feel like that would bug me. 
I haven't really come across a point where I had to worry about it. Yeah. Um, usually I have my toaster on that side. Ah, okay. So that's and a... that keeps it s sliding real nice. Yeah. So over here we got the microwave. You flip got... this up. And you see what I mean? This is not a huge door, but it gets you through and it gets you back there. Got all the plates here, the microwave, because Jay has a microwave on his boat, that's pretty dope. Uh, sink, and Jay is super water conscious. That's one thing that we'll talk about in a moment here. Uh, Jay does not have a water maker on this boat. Um, that is something that I absolutely love on mine, but Jay is really good about not using much water, so. I haven't filled since I left Antigua a month ago. Whew. I've been making water since now then. hold it we got to correct that we did have a rainstorm that i was able to top my tanks off oh no that 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 that's fine that, that doesn't count against you at all um all right cool and then of course we've got the gimbling stove here we've got the two burner and i like that he's just got a nice big uh thing there for it and then as well broiler oven down there so all right i think that pretty much concludes the tour inside Let's sit down with Jay and talk about some of the specs about the boat, some things he does like, doesn't like, where he might be going next, how he's going to use it, all those sorts of fun things. So Jay, how did you find and, uh, and get this boat? Where did it come from? Uh, I found it on a lake in New Mexico through one of the Yacht Club members. He had it. Mm. So everybody wants to know pricing on boats like this. Jay is not gonna disclose what he paid for it because if and when he goes to eventually sell this boat, a bunch of people like to say, well, you said you paid this much, so I want less than that. But Jay has added a lot to this boat, a lot of value. So to give you some sort of a context, a boat like this, when he bought it, would have sold for somewhere around $50,000. Now Jay paid somewhere between, what, thirty and $60,000 for this boat? Correct. Yeah. And added another forty k to it. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's something really important to remember you guys is I bought my boat for 23,000, but I've easily added another 23 or probably more to it, as well as the time, effort, and energy that I put into it. And a little bit of my blood. It's quite a bit of my blood on that boat. Yeah, yeah, Jay, Jay is always... So Jay, big million dollar question for you. Do you like your boat? 95% of the time I do. All right, yeah. Well, when I did an interview like this with Hoop, he, he was he was somewhere in the low 30s, I think, you know, so yeah. that's a significant and I'd say I'm, I'm in the 90s on mine as well. So I think that that's a reasonable amount. What would you say are some of the things that you were like, oh, I hate that my boat does this or that or doesn't do this or that? I wish I could do all of my reefing from the cockpit. Oh, yeah. Um, I'd really like to have a better uh, slug carrier unit of mass. I was watching it as you were coming down. Yeah, yeah it doesn't go up and down real nice and, yeah. and smooth. I personally think it's the cut of this sail. Yeah. Um, yeah. So those are the, the couple things that really drive me nuts. What do you like best about your boat? What would you say is like the, the first thing that comes to mind when I'm like, what do you like best about this boat? The reason I bought it, the half cabin. If I'm yeah. gonna live on a, live on a boat full time, that aft cabin is the kick. Yeah. And I've been on it seven years now. Oh, that is important. Yeah, seven years. Living living aboard seven years? Full time, seven Ooh. years. Uh, 12,000 nautical miles, not bad, not bad. Average sailing speed, 5.9, not yeah. bad, not bad at all. Uh, coming up on four years on the open ocean. Oh, wow. Hey, here's an interesting little tidbit for you. Uh huh. How many sailboats do you know that have done 75 miles an hour? You know, uh, I briefly did it once off the back of a wave, but I have a feeling yours was on a trailer. Correct. <laughs> be very scary if it wasn't. And that's something that is really cool about boats, uh, like the size of Jay's here, the 35 foot and my uh, 37 foot, is we can still put ours on a trailer and actually ship them. And I have future plans to not go through the Panama Canal, but instead go to Corpus Christi, Texas, put my boat on a trailer and have it brought up to Seattle if it's a viable plan or not. That is viable. Now, if you instead get like, which I love, like uh, an, uh, a Mel Supermaru 46, which is a beautiful sailboat, yeah, you're not putting that thing on a trailer and taking that anywhere. That it's thing's going very in the different. water. <laughs> yeah. You have height restrictions, you have width restrictions, and you've got the weight restrictions. Yeah, so pretty cool thing that you can do with this. Jay, if you had to start again and you had double the budget, is this the boat you would go for? Or I guess my, what I might be asking even is, do you think this is your forever boat? Do you think you're ever going to upgrade to something else? I'd like to be the same floor plan as this, but a little bit bigger. Yeah. A little bit longer, um, a little bit wider. 
especially if I do a Pacific Crossing or something, uh, it's just a little bit more on the comfortability yeah. and the roll of the boat. Okay. Um, this is comfortable, but it'd be more comfortable Yeah. while under sail. Cool, cool. Jay, how do you make your money to support yourself living out here? Because you've been doing it now for seven years, so what do you do to support yourself? I've done a lot of canvas work, mm -hmm. like the bimini top. That's right. The cushions the... right here that we're sitting on, uh, the cushions in the back, I've done it for numerous people. I just got done doing a big uh, fiberglass deck job for a boat up in Antigua. Uh, yeah. So I do fiberglass work and paint work also. Jay, just do me a favor, just put your hands up to the camera. I just want to show <laughs> this, look at these things. This. This is a working man's hand right here. And then, yeah, just constantly. I mean, these things are just, I mean, I mean, he doesn't even need a wrench anymore. He just, <laughs> neep, neep, neep. What would you like to change about this boat? What are some upgrades that you plan to make? Do you want to get a water maker? Upgrades would be taking care of the sail and the sail track, like okay. we just talked about. Yeah. Uh, a water maker on it. Um, somebody else just asked me the same questions. Can Probably a slightly bigger battery bank. New batteries. New batteries. Yeah. Gotcha. And I'm debating on lithium or not lithium. You have a big advantage with your lithium because you can use 100% of the battery. Well, I, as a. 80% for the record, folks, I use 80%. Yeah. Whereas I can only use 50% of my capacity. It's a lot more. I mean, I, I basically I have two, like, they're the size of two regular car batteries but it would take like 12 or 15 car batteries to equal what I have. Right. And I built it myself. It looks like a bomb. It's my favorite thing about it. It looks like a bomb. <laughs> and my favorite thing is I finally got it to all work and I haven't had any frustration since. So, anyway. so the other thing that I would do before making a ocean crossing is new standing rig. Ah, yeah, that would be good. I could, I could probably go for that on my boat uh, as well. My standing rigging is 10 years old as of this month. Mm -hmm. uh, now, six out of the ten years was fresh water. Now that, that makes a big difference, fresh, not salt, but as well, your rigging looks really good still. Yeah. I don't see any problems with it. So this is one of my favorite questions. What is the closest you've come to sinking this boat? What's the scariest situation you got in? Maybe it was sailing it, maybe it was almost hitting something, someone almost hitting you. What comes to mind when I say, what's the closest you've come to sinking? I'm trying to remember the the cut you and I both have been to it in the Luthers. Oh, current cut. No, the one that, that has a real narrow channel going into the bay. And you jump off the, the cliff. Oh, yeah, because uh, I, I fly my drone when I go through there. That yeah. is, uh, and I have a, I have that as my background on my, on my laptop. That is Hatchet Bay. Hatchet Bay, that's the one. And the reason I say that is because when we were coming into it, the winds were out of the west, west, southwest. Yeah, that'd be bad. And there's a big boulder on yeah. your starboard side. Yep. Just as you're entering it, I spearfished first time around that boulder. It's great. <laughs> and it's real narrow. It looks like you're not going to fit. And I just had to go for it, floor the engine, and just drive it through. And, it's like, and I hope I don't hit anything. What's interesting is a ferry goes in and out of there. And the size of this ferry, because I have it on drone, it going in and out, I believe it's four or five car widths wide. It holds four or five car widths, like, abreast. And it goes in and out of there. Now, I agree, it's a scary cut. It's, especially with the wind hitting from the, the yeah, side I, like that. I, I, normally, you, you go when it's coming out of the east, and then it's the easiest thing in the world. But yeah, if you went when it's coming out of the west, that could be scary. Yeah, and not knowing it for the yeah. first time. Now that yeah. I've been there, knowing it. It's, it's scary. It looks very small when you're going in your first time. Second time I went in, I actually had my drone above me and I decided to go off of what the drone could see, not off of what I could see. And I swore looking I was going to hit the thing, but I was like 50 feet away from the rock. Oh. Yeah, so that, so that was really scary. Trusting a drone screen yeah, over my naked eye. I was very weird. Yeah. Uh, this is probably my other favorite question. What is your happiest memory with this sailboat? Jay had to have a long think about it, and we, we both uh, went back and forth. So, Jay, what do you think your happiest memory sailing this boat is? Sailing it through New York Harbor and around the Statue of Liberty, having lunch right in front of the Statue of Liberty, and then going up underneath the Brooklyn Bridge. 
Okay, that so, was pretty cool. So I've gotten through New York Harbor and stuff. I didn't go around the Statue of Liberty. I went mm -hmm. past it. That is cool. That must. It, it's such an iconic. Like just you feel like you've arrived. Like you've made it. Yeah. So I can I can really relate to you on that. Because yeah. I got I got one one last last question. What are your briefly? What are your future plans with this boat? Uh, your future plans are to sail with your good buddy Daniel uh, uh, back uh, up the chain. Uh, well, down to Grenada, spend the yep. summer down there during hurricane season. Go back up to St. Martin by just after the first of the year. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to make a decision. Do we go back to the States? Do we come back down this way? Do we go to Columbia? Is it even a... Oh, I didn't know it was a question. Oh, I'm not going back to the U.S. Yeah. Well, the only reason I would go back to the U.S. is to do repairs on the boat. Well, we can do repairs everywhere else. It'll be cheaper. Maybe. Oh, there's, there's a lot of things. Anyway, yeah. my, my plan, and I thought it was his plan too, but... We, right now, we're filming this, uh, we're in the Grenadines right now, and it is gorgeous here. Uh, and next, we'll be sailing down to Grenada, which is out of the hurricane zone. I'll have my boat there for a couple months. Grenada. What did I say? Grenada. To Grenada? <laughs> <laughs> to Grenada. Uh, so I'll be sailing down to Grenada, and then I'll be coming back up with Jay. It's just, sailing the, the uh, Eastern Caribbean is really nice because the wind is usually out of the east. Usually. Except it's, when you need to go in that direction. It's fine, it's fine. You just gotta wait a day or two. Just gotta wait a day or two. You know, it's some of the easiest sailing that we've we've done. It, it's fun though, because you've usually got close to 20 knots of wind and you get to kind of get beat up a bit, feel all that speed, and then you, you get to an island and it kind of sucks you into the island in a good way. And maybe you spend the night and then get out in the morning and hit the next island. So it's a lot of fun. Um, even with my engine going down, I did, I, mean, I can pretty much say I've done like the whole Caribbean in what two weeks. Lengthwise, yeah. yeah, from Link from St. Martin yeah. all the way down. So anyway, so so I'll be spending um, you know summer and doing repairs and upgrades in Grenada as well, and then sailing back up to St. Martin, which I love St. Martin, and then I'm hoping to together. Well, no matter what, you'd be with me for this anyway. Yeah. Be going downwind down the thorny path, the fun part. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, St. Martin to the British Virgin Islands. U.S. Virgin Islands, Spanish Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and then across the Mona Passage to the southern coast of Dominican Republic, which could be pretty cool in and of itself. And then from right. there, a three-day hop skip down to, to Colombia. Or go to Mexico and do the Western Caribbean, Belize, Honduras, Ooh. Costa Rica. Uh, That's true. No, I'm planning and, and, on doing and, that and eventually. San, Bla uh, San Blas Islands. You're going to be. You're looking at doing that going north, possibly. I, I'm looking. Yeah. So after. So so going from um, Dominican Republic South Coast down to Colombia, and then from Colombia, I don't remember what countries are there, but just going throughout. Because then I can hit the San Blas of Panama. Will be right there. Right. And then I'll go offshore probably for like Nicaragua and Honduras. Come back in for Roatan. I'll uh, hit Belize hit Mexico, and then my plan is to actually go to Texas, Corpus Christi probably, put my boat on a trailer and have it, right. trailer it up to Seattle, Washington, do Alaska for a season, uh, back to Alaska, I've spearfished it once before with a kayak, and that was brutal. Right. Um, so spearfish, maybe hunt, maybe explore, and then do a downwind sail from Alaska all the way down to Baja to Sea of Cortez, right. and there's a lot to see down there. So. Who knows, maybe I could convince you to, maybe we'll get like a deal. Maybe we'll get put our boats on a train. Just train the boats, you know, it'd be my boat, then your boat, or your boat. You know, your boat's a little faster, oh, okay. so you get to go first, yeah. you know. <laughs> maybe they'll let us like stay on the boat, we can, you know, just, just steer the rudder, yeah. you know. That would be funny. We'll go like this as we pass people. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I think that banter pretty much does it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this boat tour. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And I'll see you guys on the next adventure. Cheers. Cheers.